This demonstration is intended for professionals only. Homeowners should not attempt these projects without first consulting a licensed professional. I'm Matt Whitbeck, a home builder and remodeler from Saratoga Springs, New York. Building smarter, better designed, and longer lasting homes using proper techniques and building science is my passion. I'll be talking to pros around the country about issues that affect their daily work and how they overcome them. This is Building Science. Hey, we're in Charlotte, North Carolina this week. And I'll tell you, when I think about humidity and hot weather, I think about the South. So we're gonna be meeting with Vince about a crawl space issue that the homeowners called him about. Uh, crawl space has got a lot of humidity issues, moisture issues, so we're gonna go through a multi-step process here with Vince and he's gonna show us how he does remediation for these crawl spaces, make sure he brings them back to life and gets all of the uh, rot, mold, and insects out of those space to make sure that it's fresh and new and working well. I'm pretty happy to go down here and meet with Vince and see what kind of techniques he uses. Hopefully he's got something to teach us today. Hey Vince, how you doing? Good, how are you, Matt? Vince, we're out here today because you are a foundation expert. And we're dealing with a crawl space that's got a lot of moisture in it and you're the guy that typically people call. So tell us a little bit about how you got into this business. I started out as a handyman. Um, I started out doing roofs and um, decks and porches and so forth, like lots of contractors, and then um, built a few spec houses um, as a general contractor, and then became a flipper, a house flipper. And so we flipped about 20 homes a year, my brother and I, with our company uh, for six or seven years, and then we realized that the foundation piece was the most scary for lots of people. And so we uh, developed a company based exclusively on the foundation repair business. Uh, we started doing it for other investors and started uh, repairing their homes. And uh, over time, we realized that uh, this was a, a good business to get into. We had a particular uh, skill set that matched up well and our guys enjoyed it. And so. Uh, we started our own foundation repair company about six years ago, and so far so good. That's awesome. So you got a great history with understanding how houses work as a whole, and then by working on the foundations, now you understand a really intricate part that a lot of people are a little intimidated to go about, and that's really great because we look at everything as a system approach. You have to know what you're dealing with and what it has a reaction with. So you guys have dealt with whole houses before and you understand the process of how that's gonna happen. So in this particular case, uh, what made the client call you to come in and have to deal with this crawl space issue? This client called us because they had some weakness in the middle of their house. They had some f uh, flooring that was a little soft. Um, they, I, they knew about some of the wood rot that was going on under the house. They thought it was an issue but they called us to come out and take a look. And when we got here, we discovered that they not only had subfloor rot in the center of the house, but they also had girder um, damage. They had band seal damage, which is on the front of the house. And they had several floor joists that were attached to those areas that also needed repair. So we developed a plan to replace all of those structural components, the band seal, the floor joists, the subfloor, the girder beam, uh, ledger boards, all of that as well as mitigate the moisture concerns and issues that caused the rot in the first place. And so we developed a plan that included a sealing of the crawl space area. We sealed off all of the outside vents to keep the warm air out. And then in our plan, we included a dehumidifier to take the moisture out of the air uh, so that the moisture is really not an issue anymore. That's great and that's a really important step that we look at because if we're gonna close off all the venting capabilities to that crawl space, we really wanna make sure that we put something in mechanically that's gonna deal with that and a dehumidifier is really necessary for that. We're finding as these houses get tighter and tighter, a mechanical dehumidification system is really important. We need to be able to get that moisture out of the house because houses are a lot tighter, they're not as leaky as they used to be, so we need some kind of mechanical system to relieve that. So when we go in and close that all off, I really like that they called you, there's a structural issue, instead of just repairing the structural part, which is needed here, you guys are gonna go a couple steps beyond and make sure that you deal with what was causing that moisture issue, which is the percolation of moisture up out of the floor, the humidity exchanges through the vents, 
and then we're going to deal with it that way. So that's a really great solution. Are there additional things that sometimes you would add on with clients to really improve that and make it a little bit better? Absolutely. Um, another step that uh, is often included is mold remediation and fungus remediation. Uh, a lot of times uh, there's not an actual mold issue, but there's a heavy fungus issue. And when the moisture levels are elevated for a long period of time, the fungus just continues to grow and grow, and it may develop into mold. Uh, so in a lot of cases, like this one, we're gonna go in and address the fungus issues that are there. We're gonna coat the wood with a sealant. Basically, we're gonna uh, prevent mold from attaching to uh, the framing members down there. Um, and also, uh, insulation is a key component to crawl space areas. Uh, in a lot of homes, uh, we install insulation uh, between floor joists to make sure that the uh, HVAC equipment is able to work a little bit more efficiently in the home. Uh, being in that Gulf jet stream, the same place you guys are down here, just stays a lot warmer and more humid for longer down here. So getting rid of that humidity is a really big deal. And you brought up the fungus. Fungus is a really big deal because we need warm, we need wet and we need dark to grow fungus. And that really sounds like most crawl spaces I've sure. been in, right? That's right. You throw in a food source with all the wood framing and you've got a perfect recipe for mold and fungus to start growing. That's exactly right. So we're gonna deal with all those things. We're gonna watch how your company deals with that. And you can go down and uh, talk us through the step-by-step -step process. You ready to get going? We'll go take a look in that crawl space. Absolutely, let's awesome. go. Well, Matt, this is our crawl space opening. This one is a, a average size. Sometimes they're much, much smaller. Sometimes they're a little larger. Uh, we're gonna go in here and check out what we've got going on. We've got, uh, you can hear some of the wood replacement that's finishing up. We've got some wood uh, repairs on the left. As soon as we walk in, you're gonna see a lot of fungus. You're gonna see some insulation. Uh, you're gonna see an old vapor barrier that is not doing its job anymore. Uh, we're going to eventually take that out. Right now it's covering the ground so we can work uh, in this tight space. But uh, this crawl space is actually not too bad on the front side, but as you get closer to the back it gets pretty tight. It's about uh, maybe 16 inches deep in the far part of the crawl space. So when you guys get into these uh, crawl spaces, Vince, you, you were saying that this is an average size or there's a little more height than you're normally dealing with. Do you find that that makes it pretty difficult to get the vapor barrier down? Absolutely. That's one of the major challenges of working in crawl spaces and the obstructions as well. You can see this HVAC package unit. A lot of houses these days have moved over to the package units. Um, they used to have a condenser that sits outside and air handler under the house, but now they've put all of the uh, mechanical pieces outside and all they do is run a trunk line from one end of the house to the other and it creates a major obstruction. Uh, from front to back and so airflow that once was traveling freely under the house is now trapped in different areas of the crawl space. And so what we do is uh, try to capture the dry air from the dehumidifier and we move it to different areas of the crawl space to just try to uh, make sure that all the crawl space is a conditioned area now. Chain of unintended consequences we often look at are when we do something like this and add the big trunk work. Obviously, this is a lot easier for a mechanical guy to work on because everything's outside and he doesn't have to crawl into that crawl space. Right. But then the side effect of that is we're obstructing a lot of that convection movement, the airflow that we really want that space to have to make sure that it can move and migrate that humidity out. So always things that we need to look at when we're investigating and when we're looking at how to do a job is what's gonna happen after. I've changed how this house has lived for 50 years. What's gonna happen now? So. Let's go take a look. Well, Matt, this is our crawl space. Uh, this is our work environment. Um, let, let me show you around a little bit. Um, just over, about two joists over, we replaced some band joists that was rotten at the front of the house. And we cut all those floor joists back and sistered full length floor joists all the way back to the girder after replacing it with uh, treated wood. Um, and just beyond that, uh, on the other side of the trunk line, we replaced a section of center girder. Uh, that was a little more challenging. We had to put some temporary supports in there. We removed the old rotten wood, 
replaced it, and then removed our temporary supports. Uh, the next step for this project will be to um, address all of this fungus that you see around here. And that's the reason why we have our masks on. Uh, we'll put them back on in just a second. But the fungus attaches to anything that's organic and begins to grow, and it becomes mold over time. Um, we've got a fogging machine that applies our chemical. Um, this is our fogging machine, and it distributes an even amount to all of the wood members in the area. And if we encounter an area that has uh, excessively uh, thick mold, then we'll have to come behind with a nylon brush and uh, either soap and water or more chemical and just scrub it off. Um, and after that, uh, we'll remove this uh, standard uh, six mil liner. Then we can put down our liner and we'll install a little thicker with a little bit better protection. After that, we'll uh, prevent the mold from coming back with our mold prevention solution. We'll go around to all of the framing members and spray it by hand, which basically just adds a little protective coating to the wood to keep the fungus from reattaching. Um, and then after that, we'll set our dehumidifier and make sure everything is running, run our exhaust duct to the back of the cross space on the other side of the trunk line so that we get a, get a little bit of air movement going from dry to our moist area down here and, um, and pipe that discharge out of the cross space and then we'll be, we'll be good to go. I see the, the joist systems, the girders that we've replaced. Um, that, is, that is great stuff. So we're gonna start with making sure that all of the punky wood comes out. Anything that's suspect or in question here has to get removed and pulled out. And then once we're stable and strong, we're not gonna stop there because we don't want this problem to come back again. So then we're going to deal with the vapor retarder down on the floor, moisture blanket, right, which we're going to put down. And then we're going to seal off these vents and, uh, and then make sure that we're treating all of this to get rid of what was there, putting a preventative sealant on it so that it doesn't want to come back. Because I don't know about you, but I find that once there's mold set in it, it really wants to resurface pretty quickly if we, if we keep that moist area. Um, alive. So you're going to get rid of that moisture, that humidity down here with the dehumidifier. So preventing that by putting the treatment on and the dehumidifier, piping the dehumidifier's uh, water as it gathers it to the outside of the building, which is great. Did you say we were going to go through and add some insulation also around this outside? You're correct. We've, uh, we're going to use a froth pack, um, which is spray foam insulation. We're going to insulate all of these four joist bays along the exterior of the house. It adds a, it increases the R value of the insulation and also helps prevent vapor um, from penetrating this wood in particular. And we're going to use a rigid foam board on the vents uh, along with spray foam insulation there as well. And I really like that, you know, when we think about the principles of insulation with conduction, convection, radiation, you're really knocking down all that convective loop of the air trying to move back and forth in there, which is going to bring humidity with it. And that's going to help kind of stop this and not make the motor of that dehumidifier run quite so much. Because if we left these open, the dehumidifier would run full all out all the time because it'd be stuck in humidity from outside the building. So we want to stop that humidity from transferring back into the crawl space, let the mechanical system just deal with the crawl space on its own instead of trying to dehumidify the entire world. So right. I like that. That's really great, Vince. Uh, great multi-step solution. Now, if you were going to take it a little bit further down here and the budget wasn't as big of a deal, are there a couple steps you might add in here to the client to say, hey, here's a couple other things you might be able to do? Absolutely. That's uh, one of our premium services is a full encapsulation, uh, which does include um, a vapor retardant all the way up to the, uh, almost to the band seal. We want to leave a little gap there for our termite inspection to make sure we're, we can check for termites later. But what we'll do is attach the same floor liner uh, to the walls. We'll mechanically attach it. We'll caulk it to the walls. We'll go up the piers to make sure that there's no vapor uh, intrusion there. We'll also include a humidity monitor. Uh, we'll do a, a humidity alarm, uh, that type of thing, just, just so it's a full uh, maintenance-free option for those customers. And a lot of times when there's already damage that is extensive, we recommend that option for those customers as well, um, although it is a premium service and 
uh, it's, it's, it's a really great way to know that your crawl space is protected for just a lifetime. And even again down the road a little ways here, uh, the homeowner can obviously call you guys to come back and add some of those pieces or parts to the house maybe a year or two years down the road. So we got a kind of good, better, best technique of how we're going to go about this. We make sure that the client's protected and they're aware, something that's got a heck of a lot less maintenance required for it to have to go and mechanically, physically open and close all the vents to your house. And uh, I would say a lot better of a system when we really think about how this crawl space is going to react to humidity levels when we put that dehumidifier down here, which we're starting to find the, the need for dehumidifiers a heck of a lot more in all of the crawl spaces and in all the homes that we're air conditioning because the homes are just getting tighter and tighter and tighter, which we really need for energy conservation. Yeah, sure. So we got to get the humidity out of them some way. So great work, Vince. We really appreciate you having us and taking us through all these steps of how you improve these crawl spaces. Yes, sir. Thank you for uh, talking with me. And I'm going to go check on my guys and make sure we're finishing up in the tight spots of our crawl space. That's great. All right. Well, it's pretty tight in there. And that's what we'd expect out of a crawl space. Well, Vince's guys are down there really kicking some butt, taking care of everything, taking care of all these details. Talk for a minute about how this happens. This is gonna happen from uh, groundwater. So when the water table starts to get high, especially in the springtime, uh, everything's melting, a lot of rain, our water table is gonna come up a little bit. We're getting a lot of rain that's coming off of the roof system. So we're dealing with roof runoff, coming down downspouts and really saturating the ground. Then we're dealing with a cementus base or bricks, uh, stone foundations where there's a lot of gaps, cracks, and then we're dealing with wicking. So that water is able to pass right through the foundation and into our crawl space or basement and really saturate the ground inside of it. Uh, that becomes a pretty big problem. We're also going to be dealing with things that uh, pertain to capillary action and that's going to be that movement of the water back and forth through the capillaries of this stone. We're going to be dealing with pressure differences and humidity differences. So our pressure differences are always going to move from more to less. So when our humidity levels start to get high outside and they're trying to traffic to the inside, we're dealing with things like leaky pipes, leaky ductwork, things that are going to accumulate and add to the moisture issues that are inside. Uh, we're dealing with things outside like sprinkler systems, uh, landscaping problems where the landscape has been changed over several years of plantings. It's causing the water to move a little bit differently around the house. So to fix these issues on the inside, we're going to seal and insulate all of the vents to keep the moisture out. We're going to lay a poly vapor moisture barrier across the ground and we're going to install a dehumidifier and duct to create a convective loop of dry air inside the crawl space. And then obviously taking care of the outside issues, extending the downspouts from the gutters, making sure that any sprinkler systems or anything that are taking care of the lawn or the plants are, are not gonna oversaturate those areas and not have appropriate runoff. We like to do our plantings a little bit further away from the house. We're gonna see a lot of people plant right up next to the building and then water these plants constantly and that water seeps in through the foundation. We wanna try to avoid that. So that's a conversation to have with the homeowners while you're working for them. How do they take care of that water runoff and how have they affected their property with landscaping over time? Thank you for watching Building Science and check out our how-to videos on how to complete projects like this and many more.